you very much, Javier. So um, yes, we were um, thinking about uh, how uh, do we uh, make the organizational case well in our institutions, how do we convince uh, our colleagues, our boss, uh, that we need to, uh, to go forward with, uh, with AI. And um, on this topic, uh, I thought it would be interesting to share the story of uh, what we've done at the National Library of France. So for those who, who don't know me, um, I'm, uh, I'm in charge of uh, digital strategy uh, at the National Library of France. And um, uh, I've been working for several years now on um, building a data lab for uh, research on our digital collections and uh, other activities that at some point ended uh, being related to, to AI. So in 2020, um, I was charged by our director general um, to create a roadmap uh, for AI at the BNF. And um, this roadmap so was created by a group of persons from the BNF. And uh, we presented it during the Fantastic Futures uh, conference uh, in Paris in, in December uh, in the format in, in the format of a poster. So um, I, I didn't prepare slides. I just uh, used um, the poster, and uh, we can uh, provide a link to the to the poster that is available uh, online as well. Uh, so I'm going to uh, try and share my screen uh, if I can do it. Hmm. So I don't know if I can do that. Um, okay, I just had to change computer because uh, <laughs> because I wasn't, um, it wasn't working with my Wi-Fi, and now it's not, uh, it's not working with this. Okay. Emmanuel, is it a permissions issue, or is it just? The, yeah, it's just get... a permission issue. I'm going to fix fix this in a. In a... Uh, do you want me to to share my screen? Maybe uh, I can find the web page uh, with the poster. Um, if you can do it, it's wonderful because, uh, yes, it's, it's a permission issue, but it's not a Zoom permission issue. It's my computer that doesn't allow me to record my screen with Zoom. Uh, so, um, so Celine, if that's not too much trouble for you. Uh, yes, yes, I'm okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. I can, I can continue uh, speaking uh, without the poster. It's not a big issue. So um, what I, I want can, to, I can share it if you when, want. whenever you want. Yes. Uh, so I, I especially I wanted to highlight uh, today um, the process. So um, the process of creating a roadmap uh, for artificial intelligence in, in a library like like ours. Um, and why would we want to do that? And uh, what's the purpose? And how did, you, did we do it? So to start with the why. Um, actually, uh, we've been working on, on AI projects uh, at an experimental scale, scale for several years now, uh, especially when it comes to using uh, OCR uh, and uh, computer vision techniques. And uh, we had some experimentations very successful with uh, partners from the, from the academic uh, sector. And... Uh, What's, what happens is that uh, it's, it's, well, it's quite easy to make successful experiments uh, on a small scale corpora of, collect, of digital collections, uh, especially when you have uh, skilled uh, academic partners who are ready to, to work with you. Uh, it's mo much more challenging uh, to industrialize um, the realizations that, that you've created uh, using uh, AI. And uh, definitely after attending uh, the first uh, conferences, uh, Fantastic Futures of the AI for Lamb community, we really wanted to um, have a roadmap on how we were going to, um, to experiment and more, more than experiment, actually, how we were going to industrialize uh, AI in our institution. So uh, maybe Celine, you can zoom in on the actions uh, at the top of the, of the poster. Uh, and I will I will speak a little about that. 
So um, when we were working on the on the roadmap, so the first step I think was to obtain uh, this uh, mission from our di director general to create a roadmap, which was a very good starting point. It means that the institution wants to go in that direction. Uh, so as I was in charge of it, we had several workshops with colleagues and uh, we came up with a few uh, basic actions uh, that we thought we need to, to undertake if we want at some point to industrialize um, artificial intelligence in our, in our institution. And of, of obviously, the first one uh, is to make AI um, a, a part of the institution strategy. So as we are currently working on our new um, contract plan with the, um, with the Ministry of Culture uh, in France, which is the document that binds us and gives us objectives for the next uh, five years, uh, one of the, the things that we highlight in the roadmap is that it's, we need to emphasize uh, the uh, AI as an objective for the National Library uh, inside this, um, this binding document with the, with the ministry, making it a, an official decision to work uh, on AI in the, in the upcoming years. Uh, in the global strategy, there is also a question about uh, taking into account ethics. So um, especially, um, but not limited to uh, privacy issues, BAs, and of course, uh, environmental uh, impact um, and impact on, on the change for the people, for the staff of the, of the library. Uh, and also under this global strategy action, uh, there was the, the idea of um, uh, having to change somehow uh, how we're working on IT in the library, uh, because uh, innovation requires uh, time and resources from, from the IT. Uh, so they need to, to foresee what are the kind of changes that are upcoming and, uh, and to participate in setting the goals for innovation in the library, which leads to the second action, which uh, focuses on R&D projects and how we can better work uh, within the library on integrating uh, research and development projects and, and going from research uh, to, um, to actual industrialization when the research is successful. Then we have a full action on the skills for the staff. And under this section, uh, what we have um, uh, recommended uh, is threefold. Uh, there is first, of course, the need to have um, an expert uh, level to lead some projects, not only for the IT, but also for the collections experts and the data experts. Uh, they need to, um, to get acquainted with the um, AI technologies in order to be able to lead some projects or at least participate in them. But also uh, developing new skills for all the staff. So we think there is a need for global awareness uh, for AI uh, in, in the staff, uh, not only because AI is now part of our strategy, but also because AI is part of society in general. And as information professional librarians, we think that it's important that our staff is aware of, uh, of, of the presence of algorithms in the tools that we are using uh, every day. So it's really raising awareness, not only on the library applications of AI, but on AI in general and the challenges and ethics and things like that. Um, the fourth action is more uh, on the technical side. Um, of course, uh, you need um, adapted infrastructure um, if you want to do AI projects at an industrial scale, uh, but also data management. And as a, as a library, we are very strong, strong uh, on, on uh, the data uh, quality and data management side but um, it's still a bit scattered or siloed in the library and really we need to, to work on a global uh, governance that makes uh, that breaks the silos and especially the technical silos that separate for instance uh, the catalog data from the digital library data or the web archives data for other digital collections to just to give a few a few examples and finally um, the fifth action of the roadmap 
is to design a multi-year program uh, with partners, uh, partners uh, from the academic field, as I mentioned before, but also other libraries or even the private sector. And uh, the program is something very important because um, maybe Celine, you can go down the poster and we can look at the galaxy of projects, which is a, a kind of detail of uh, what we are doing in the, um, in the AI program. So one of the key um, of, of the key uh, feedback that we had from working on uh, the roadmap for AI at the BNF was that uh, if you try to categorize the use cases uh, into the main library functions like cataloging, preservation, access, um, user engagement, and things like that. Um, you can find applications for AI in all these fields. Uh, so yes, thank you, Céline. That's exactly what you can see um, on the left of your screen. So, um, so we, we made a big list of all the, the use cases, all the potential projects that we could do with AI at the library. And these projects were falling in all these categories. So uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of the key uh, feedback that we had that um, there, there can be AI anywhere in, in an organization like the BNF. So then um, there was a work to, to try and prioritize uh, what we needed to do first and what could uh, wait a little longer. And uh, that's the result is the, the, the scheme, the diagram that you can see on your screen. Uh, where every uh, planet uh, on this uh, on this diagram is a, is a use case that we want to develop, um, and um, on the bottom line is the the time, so the upcoming years, and uh, on the vertical uh, axis uh, you can see uh, the level of maturity of the project at the BNF. Uh, it's not the maturity of the technology, it's really how mature uh, we feel at the BNF to work with um, such or such uh, AI project. And you can see that at the top, uh, we have the image mining project for our digital library Gallica, because uh, as I mentioned before, we've been working on computer vision for more than of, yeah, 10 years, I think now and um, doing diff different experimental projects. So that's the one that is made mature enough uh, to go into production and to be really industrialized at the scale of the digital library and it's uh, 9 million items. Uh, and then you have other type of projects. You can see that there is another small galaxy which is all the things you could do with the catalog data. And then uh, you have uh, unwritten text recognition, uh, personalized co um, content recommendation, but with an ethical perspective, uh, we really want to have um, a project with that with some partners. Um, working with web archives to identify uh, interesting documents in, uh, in web archives and making them uh, more visible in the catalogs. And the last one is on um, preservation strategies for physical collections. And then at the bottom, you have all the different uh, ideas that raised that were raised when we were working on the roadmap and that didn't em end up to be priorities, but still were interesting. And some of them are related, for instance, to um, quality control for ingesting material in the digital collections. Uh, there are chatbots, uh, there are uh, things uh, for audiovisual uh, documents to, to extract uh, metadata or to extract textual content from, from sound or from videos and things like that. So all these projects at the bottom were not prioritized, but we still decided to keep them in the roadmap because um, we now have this uh, data lab where we're working with uh, academic partners, uh, researchers, and some of them want to work on these uh, specific items. So, um, so they, are, they, they are featured here uh, so that we, we can also make progress, even if, as, if it's a more experimental and smaller scale uh, on, this, on this topic. 
So finally, um, we have uh, at the middle of the poster, um, the milestones uh, that we want to reach. So this was a projection made at the end of 2020. So you can see it starts in 21 with the uh, things um, that uh, did happen, like organizing an international conference uh, for AI for LAM uh, in the full time of COVID, uh, which was uh, really an experience. Um, but also uh, different, uh, other different type of milestones like um, training part of the staff uh, on AI awareness, as I mentioned before, uh, hosting uh, and implementing some projects and some things that are related to uh, IT services, data governance, uh, and things like that. So these milestones, um, contrary to their names, they are not written in stone. So we, we are working uh, towards this direction and we are not going to achieve um, the roadmap program in, in 2026. It's more like the starting point of, uh, of a dynamic uh, that will probably uh, take even longer than that to be achieved uh, in the different projects that I mentioned before. But it's really to have this complete view uh, of all the things we want to do uh, and an explanation on how they relate to one another. Um, it makes it easier if, if, even if it's small projects that are next one to another uh, to have the big picture and to understand what is the global strategy of the, of the BNF when it comes to, to AI. And thank you. Thank you, Anne Manuel. Uh, I think we can open the floor for questions now. Thanks, that was really great. I love how visual it is. Um, so th do you, did you think that you convinced anybody that wasn't convinced before with like this format and uh, structure of sharing the plan? Uh, I think, yes, uh, we are, we're still working on it. Uh, the first uh, step was to convince uh, the direction of the library. So now we do have AI as really a part of our strategy for the upcoming years. And that's, uh, for me, that's already a success. Um, but uh, we are still working on presenting this roadmap. We, we are organizing with uh, Céline uh, small workshops uh, where uh, we invite uh, tw 10 to 15 members of the staff um, to just discuss about uh, the roadmap and about AI strategy uh, during two hours. And we do, it, we, do, we do this every month. So it's small groups of people, but uh, little by little, we, are, we have more people who are who get interested and uh, get to, uh, you asked if we did convince people, I think in some areas like, uh, for instance, uh, handwritten text recognition, HDR, uh, really we, did, we had people who were not convinced that this could work and that are convinced now. So I think this, this way of working is, uh, is quite successful. If anybody has other questions and if we need to move on, I can also take questions in the chat or in our agenda. It's okay. We can use like uh, three more minutes for questions if anyone wants to ask something. Okay. I do have a few. So unless anyone wants to ask, okay, I'll go ahead. Um, there is a... I mean, judging by a quick visual of the infographics, which I think is great. Uh, as you mentioned, there is a lot of goodwill and a lot of uh, projects to be started and a lot of good intentions, but have you or any in your team put like thoughts on what does it entail to have AI artifacts deployed in production like what's the life cycle of a machine learning model, for example? How are you going to maintain, do the maintenance of those models, the versioning of the predictions? How are you going to inform the user? Or are those discussions part of the roadmap? 
it's a, it's a very good question and we don't have much experience on that for the moment because all the projects we have done so far uh, were experimental with the start and an end point so um, uh, I think uh, the the speaking about the more mature project that we have so the image mining project uh, we often compare this to what happened when we started uh, doing the OCR of the collections so at the beginning we didn't do the OCR ourselves we outsourced it to um, to companies uh, who, were, who had an expertise in that field and um, so we developed the full uh, pipeline to ingest uh, the OCR uh, files that were produced by the outsourcing um, service provider. Uh, but we didn't, at the beginning, have an, exper an experience or skills uh, to do it ourselves. And as the years went by, OCR used to progress. So it was good that it was outsourced because uh, we also benefited from the, pro from the progress of the technology that was outside the BNF. And at some point when we felt it was mature enough, so that was uh, two or three years ago, uh, we decided to internalize the, the OCR pipeline uh, using the best software that we knew of on the market. And, and we organized that and now we are doing our OCR ourselves. So, and, and it, if you look at uh, what, how much time it took, it's about 10 to 15 years. So it's a very long change uh, scale, uh, time scale. Uh, so, um, so when, when working on the computer vision or image mining at the scale of Gallica, we are thinking it will be a little the same. So at the beginning, we're going to process some images that are maybe easier to process. And then we will add more and more corpora. And as, as the technology evolves, uh, have more and more uh, data that we extract from the images, um, but always refreshing. Uh, this data as the technology is evolving. And at some point, hopefully, we will be uh, mature enough in terms of infrastructure, in terms of skills, and in terms of technology uh, to, to be able to host this in-house. But at the beginning, we, 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 we have plans to outsource. Okay, thank you.